Welcome to Lost in Revision. All of our content is public domain, literature, fairy tales, and folklore. We look at stories through an irreverent and lighthearted lens in our discussion episodes, and our daily stories are a fun way to listen to the original versions in a short format that can fit into most people's schedules. If you prefer to listen to full chapters, you can subscribe to our Patreon page. We just added a $1 option that provides early access and more. You can check the show notes for our Linktree page, where there are links to all of our public pages, ways to contact us, and all of our content. Our goal is to at least break even to cover our expenses, so any support that you can offer to help us reach that goal helps keep this podcast going and you entertained. All of our music is by Nathan Hubble and is used with his permission. Thanks, and enjoy the show. The Shooting Match at Nottingham Town Part 6 Here, good fellow, quoth the sheriff, Take thou the prize, and well and fairly hast thou won it, I bow. What may be thy name, and whence comest thou? Men do call me Jack O'Teviotdale, and thence am I come, said the stranger. Then, by Our Lady, Jack, thou art the fairest archer that e'er mine eyes beheld, and if thou wilt join my service, I will clothe thee with a better coat than that thou hast upon thy back. Thou shalt eat and drink of the best, and at every Christmas tide, four score marks shall be thy wage. I trow thou drawest better bow than that same coward knave Robin Hood that dared not show his face here this day. Say, good fellow, wilt thou join my service? Nay, that will I not, quoth the stranger roughly. I will be my own, and no man in all merry England shall be my master. Then get thee gone, and a murrain seize thee, cried the sheriff, and his voice trembled with anger. And by my faith and troth, I have a good part of a mind to have thee beaten for thine insolence. Then he turned upon his heel and strode away. It was a right motley company that gathered about the noble greenwood tree in Sherwood's depths that same day. A score and more of barefoot friars were there, and some that looked like tinkers, and some that seemed to be sturdy beggars and rustic hinds, and seated upon a mossy couch was one all clad in tattered scarlet, with a patch over one eye, and in his hand he held the golden arrow that was the prize of the great shooting match. Then, Amidst a noise of talking and laughter, he took the patch from off his eye and stripped away the scarlet rags from off his body, and showed himself all clothed in fair Lincoln green, and quoth he, Easy come these things away, but walnut stain cometh not so speedily from yellow hair. Then all laughed louder than before, for it was Robin Hood himself that had won the prize from the sheriff's very hands. Then all sat down to the woodland feast and talked among themselves of the merry jest that had been played upon the sheriff and of the adventures that had befallen each member of the band in his disguise. But when the feast was done, Robin Hood took Little John apart and said, Truly am I vexed in my blood, for I heard the sheriff say today, Thou shootest better than that coward knave Robin Hood, that dared not show his face here this day. I would fain let him know who it was who won the golden arrow from out his hand, and also that I am no coward such as he takes me to be. Then Little John said, Good master, take thou me and Will Stutely, and we will send yon fat sheriff news of all this by a messenger such as he doth not expect. That day the sheriff sat at meat in the great hall of his house at Nottingham Town. Long tables stood down the hall, at which sat men-at-arms and household servants and good stout villains, bond servants. In all fourscore and more, there they talked of the day's shooting as they ate their meat and quaffed their ale. 
The sheriff sat at the head of the table upon a raised seat under a canopy, and beside him sat his dame. By my troth, said he, I did reckon full roundly that that knave Robin Hood would be at the game today. I did not think that he was such a coward. But who could that saucy knave be who answered me to my beard so bravely? I wonder that I did not have him beaten. But there was something about him that spoke of other things than rags and tatters. Then, even as he finished speaking, something fell rattling among the dishes on the table, while those that sat near started up wondering what it might be. After a while, one of the men-at-arms gathered courage enough to pick it up and bring it to the sheriff. Then Everyone saw that it was a blunted gray goose shaft, with a fine scroll, about the thickness of a goose quill, tied near to its head. The sheriff opened the scroll and glanced at it, while the veins upon his forehead swelled and his cheeks grew ruddy with rage as he read, for this was what he saw. Now heaven bless thy grace this day, say all in sweet Sherwood, for thou didst give the prize away to Mary Robin Hood. Whence came this? cried the sheriff in a mighty voice. Even through the window, your worship, quoth the man who had handed the shaft to him. I hope you're enjoying the stories. We sure are enjoying creating this for you. If you go and sign up on Patreon, you can listen without having to hear me talking in the intro and outro. For only $3 a month, you get the full chapters as soon as I have them edited, and you have your own personal RSS feed with no interruptions. We just added a $1 option that provides early access and more. We also have an account with buymeacoffee.com if you want to support us that way. So check out our link tree in the show notes for all of the best ways to get in touch and support the show. There's a lot more waiting for us all at the end of the road. 